By default, browser follows the same origin policy, which allows JavaScript code to make requests only to the same domain, while restricting them to the others. Nowadays, it is a common scenario when UI and API are hosted on different origins. That is where same origin policy might become a problem. And that is where cross-origin resource sharing comes into the rescue. It extends same origin policy and provides mechanism of accessing resources located in other domains. How does it work? Whenever browser makes a request to the server, it also sends an origin header, which indicates from what domain request is being made. If request origin is allowed, then server in the response sends access control allow origin header with requested domain or asterisk, which indicates that all origins are permitted. So what will happen if hostname is not allowed? For simple requests like get, head and post with certain MIME types, the request is executed, however browser blocks the ability to read the response. For other kinds of requests, like post with different media types, put, patch, delete, browser does preflight request. Preflight request is request to the same endpoint with using a HTTP options method, which doesn't cause any state changes. Server responds with allowed origins and allowed HTTP methods. If origin is allowed, then actual request is executed, otherwise browser won't make it. But what are the risks of wrong course configuration? Why is same origin policy important? Whenever user visits a malicious website, as a response, he receives a web page that might contain a script, which calls another website's API. It might be even banking web app. If user is already authenticated to the web app, browser in turn will automatically attach cookies to the request, so the script acts on behalf of user and might read or even update his personal data. Note that this might not be the case if same site cookie attribute is properly configured. The script might also retrieve data from user's private network, which is a common case for corporate setup. One more use case might be a user visiting attacker's website, which contains a banking application injected inside an iframe. In this scenario, the iframe can be not visible or user might just be thinking that he is using the banking application itself without noticing the wrong URL. In both cases, attacker's website has access to the application page content and might be able to programmatically do the actions on behalf of the user. That was the end of this video. Please let me know what do you think about it. 